Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you know that God is an awesome God? Praise the Lord.
much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, 
might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You read. verse together receive the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul come on clap your hands for that word to the people of God because of the blessings of God if you will let us prepare our hearts as we approach the throne of grace we come to this place today to cast our cares upon him but even then Give our praise unto the name, to the Lamb that was slain, to Jesus Christ. One day the Lamb of Judah who will return to receive us unto himself. So as we come, you pray as I pray. Those that are online, lift your voices and have a little talk with Jesus. Father, we come and we bless your holy and righteous name. We magnify you this morning. We come before you, God, because we have no other God to go to. You are the only true wise God, our Father. In you, we live, we move, we have our being. We are more than conquerors through your Son, Jesus Christ. This morning, Lord, our hearts are elated, and we have a thankful way, God, because you woke us up this morning watched over us all last night but then woke us this morning that we would come to this place today and those that are there on the airwaves God that you woke us that we would have a right to come and praise your name and so this morning Lord in spite of in spite of your name is worthy to be praised you are from everlasting to everlasting you're God and you're God all by yourself Father, we thank you that you're not figuring anything out. You've already worked it out. Thank you, God, that you came down through many dangers, toils, and snares. We have experienced, but Lord, we experienced it knowing that you've already defiltered it. And so, God, as we come this morning with no complaints, but with so much praise and thanksgiving upon our hearts and our lips, we lift up your name high that men and women and children will be drawn unto you come in these desperate times God realize that you're always with us for you promised us never to leave us nor to forsake us and even now Lord as we come and pray there are times we don't know what to pray for but thank you for your leadership or your spirit that he leads us in all truths but then he teaches us what to pray for and then Lord we thank you that you already now perched down on the right hand side of Father God praying for us not praying that we would be taken out of the world, but praying that we would have your strength, your power as we conversate and even as we compass these places in which you give us on planet Earth. This morning, Lord, you've been mighty good to us, better to us than we've been to ourselves. God, you've been real cautious with us, keeping us from harm, hurt, and danger. So this morning, Lord, as we come, we're casting our cares upon you, Lord, for you told us that you care for us and you've shown us that you care for us and we love you so much, Lord, that even while we were yet dead in our trespasses and sin, God, you allowed your son to come down 42 generations and to get in our place, died but rose the third day morning that we may have life. And so, Lord, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness, so we dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean unto Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that it's on Christ, the solid rock we stand. This morning, Lord, we're solidly anchored in you, O oh God, through hell or high water, through perils and problems, through peace, and even in the midst of storms, God, you're with us always. Lord, we lift up our family to you today. We pray now, Lord, for the family here at this church placed here on called Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. God, we know that this COVID thing is running rampant through our midst. But Lord, thank you that you've already run ahead of it. So Father, have your way with us and protect us now, Lord. Those that are struggling, those that have lost their peace, those who are not walking in hope. 
God, restore the joy of our salvation. Then, Master, have mercy upon this sin-sick world, for it's in need of a touch, Lord. Not a man touch, Lord. Not an organization a touch, it's shown up. Not a government touch, but Lord, a touch from you, God. We pray now in the matchless name of Jesus, Lord, that you would be glorified in these services today, that we'll lift your name up high. Every day would be a day of thanksgiving, always, Lord, giving your name the praise. We love you and we praise you and we offer all these prayers. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of us can say together, amen. Come on, shout amen. Come on, shout amen. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow down before him. What a mighty God we serve today. Can I get a witness in this place? As our music ministry comes back today, we come to realize one thing, that when we can't do anything else, we can open our mouths and we can lift up our hands and we can praise God for he is already present. He's a mighty God. He's from everlasting to everlasting. What a mighty God we serve because he's a mighty God. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God.
Yes, he is. He's the only true wise, our God, our Father. And it is in him that we have strength. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. I want to thank our young people. And, um, you may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Thank our young people. It's good to have youth uh, back in to kind of give us an excitement. And uh, we're thankful for them. And uh, come on, y'all, put your hands together and thank them. Amen. Church is definitely not going to be done like it used to be. Uh, but one thing that never changed, that's the word of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, it don't ever change. In fact, Isaiah says that, it, you know, the grass may wither and the flower would fade it, but the word of God will last forever. Amen. And we're thankful for that. Amen. God bless you. Give me a little bit more in these uh, monitors up here. I want to uh, not only continue to invite uh, you to be in prayer. We are walking in the midst of God's uh, power and his strength, and that happens as a result of prayer. So we want to continue to ask you to be involved with that. Your own personal life, what you do at home, will determine what you do on the outside. If you have relationship and fellowship with God at home, when you come to church service, even wherever you are, you won't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we want to continue to, in, to invite you and then those who are in the midst here and those who are online to continue to read your Bible. Uh, there are a lot of uncertain things in this world today, but when it comes to God's word, one thing is certain is that it'll never fail. So do read your Bible. We invite you to read with us. We are in the midst of reading through the Bible again this year, and we want to continue to invite those who are here in our midst and our membership, our friends, whoever you are. If you're listening and hear this message, you need to know that you're invited uh, to read with us. And we have an organized plan schedule um, how we read it, and uh, you can get in touch with um, with a couple of people, Sister Estella Howard and um, uh, Sister Verdell Borkins, our kind of housing, uh, keeping that going for us. So please be mindful of that. Now, as we come down, we are not coming down to a, a sad time, but we're coming to a, a good time. You know, we want to spend time uh, talking about what is going on in the world with the uh, coronavirus. It is on fire. It is being fanned, uh, and uh, we need to be serious about it. Uh, but uh, there is something that can overturn what the coronavirus has brought on us, and that is God's word. So as we come, we go back and kind of reiterate uh, uh, in our textual verse, it's taken again from 1 Peter, uh, the uh, third chapter, the first chapter, we read verse 3 through 9, but I want to just catch verse 3. Notice these words. It says, blessed he, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto, repeat after me, a lively hope. Thank you. That's enough. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name today. We are just so excited, Lord, to be in your service one more time, regardless of our circumstances. We come here, Lord, depending and leaning on you. Have your way with us today. Feed our souls. Cultivate our hearts that we would not only be hearers of your word, but that we will be doers of it. And to that end, God, your name will receive praise from everlasting to everlasting, however long you allow us to breathe, inhale, and exhale. We'll give your name the praise. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Shout with me, amen. I'm going to say it again, amen. One more time, amen. Amen. The folks used to say, one for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I greet our preacher who is here today and, uh, and then our officers who are here and, and to you who are here and those on uh, the airwaves there in, in uh, what we call cyberspace. Uh, we greet you in the joy of the Lord. Today, I want to continue to talk about our theme. Our theme is um, exemplifying 
what we have now. Uh, the thing that's brought us through is the fact that we've been, we've been walking in hope. Uh, we have not been uh, doubtful uh, in our plight, but we are walking in hope. Whenever people hear that word hope and decide that they're tired of hearing it, it's because they have no hope. Uh, we who have hope, we know that our hope is not built on things of this world, but rather we, uh, our hope is built on Jesus Christ. And when you in Christ, listen to what I'm saying, when you in Christ, there may be some difficulties around you, even in your camps, but when you build your hope in Christ, you cannot be shaken. Rain may fall on you. Fire may try to come towards you. The water may be filling up around you, but neither one of those would cause you to become unstable. And so we are hopeful people, and our hope is not in the rudiments and the, the physicalities of things on this earth. Our hope is built in Jesus Christ. If you place your hope in something else other than Christ, you are most miserable. If your hope is built on material things, you are going to be disappointed. But I declare I'm a living witness that when you place your hope in Christ, he'll never fail you, he'll never be too late, and he'll always do what he said he's going to do. And so that's where we get a good hand clap right there unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so as we pray to today and pray for God's visitation, uh, let us talk from this subject, uh, a living hope. Yeah, a living hope. Uh, today as we transcribe the world, today is, is reeling and it is rocking uh, through the spectrum of disillusionment. Uh, every day, every day, the news uh, greets us with another disaster, another reminder of how far uh, this world has fallen. And all of the things that can uh, cause us to lose hope seems to come our way. Can I get somebody? One person said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And Paul says it like this, when I want to do good, evil is always present. And we are always in the throes of the world. The world is not perfect. And so we should not look for things to be perfect in the world. But we do have a perfect Savior that all has done all things well. And even though we are bombarded with so much, uh, don't lose your hope. And as we live in this world today, as Christians, we know God had, and his son, Jesus Christ. Anybody that don't know him for themselves are most miserable. Uh, I'm not talking about know him as your parents knew him, as your siblings knew him or even as your, your great parents have known him. But I'm talking about you know him for yourself. Man, when you know him for yourself, life still is worth living. And then don't be concerned overly about the things that don't work out right because you touched them. Just remember that God has already done something for you that nothing can cause the moth to eat it up. And so as we think about that, and we don't have to be left on the corner of hopelessness and despair. Yeah, we're moving toward hope. Uh, we may not be all, all the way in hope, but we're moving toward it. Every day we're moving closer and closer. And so there's hope and there is a living hope. There is hope and a, there is living hope in the world, but not all are in that what I call living hope. Uh, it is a synonym for wish, this earthly 
hope. Uh, I hope it turns out all right tomorrow. I'm hoping that it will rain. But from God's pr perspective, living hope is synonymous with the living Christ. Jesus is not dead. Can I get somebody? If he's dead, then we are in trouble. If he is dead, then we are not only most miserable, but we are without hope. We are tearful. We are doubtful. We have nothing to hang our hats on. Our, our position of life doesn't seem to be worth living. A few, few days ago, one of the uh, actresses' uh, sons on, took his life. We don't know the reason why, but if anybody decides to give up on God and take their lives, it's because they have lost their hope. The Christian, when we think about our position, we have conquered death through the resurrection knowing Jesus Christ. If Christ is dead, then his resurrection must let us know that if he does not get out of the grave, we have nothing to hang our hope on. But he is not dead. He's alive. And not only is he alive, but he's well. Not only is he alive and well, but he's working on our behalf. And one glad morning, he's coming back to receive us unto himself. That's why we have hope. Hope because even when things have just diabolically gone wrong in our lives, we have hope in Jesus Christ. Because he got up out of that grave, now sits on the right-hand side of Father God. I wish I had some help up in here today. The, the Christian Peter here in the text was writing uh, to, to face, get people to face the big time persecution and suffering that they were going through. Uh, sometimes to not talk about a negative thing doesn't mean that it would disappear. But we talk about it so that we can be reinfused with what God has said. God didn't tell us that we wouldn't have some bad days. God didn't tell us that there, would be, there wouldn't be some weary moments in our lives. The Lord didn't tell us that there, there would be always hidey hideys. No, he told us that we would have ups and downs. He said, if you follow me, you are going to be persecuted. He says this, that we ought to not forget. Though you've been persecuted for my sake, he says, listen, I've already overcome. <laughs> and because I've overcome, you too can overcome. And whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, but you got to have that Christian hope that is built built on Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, Paul is speaking to some people that are church folks, and they are located in a place there near Rome, and they're having some difficulties. It, it, it would seem that once you come to know Jesus, it seems like there shouldn't be no more issues. But I think I got a bunch of witnesses here and online can say that because I follow him, it seems like hell gates always open up on me. In fact, when I was doing what I wanted to do outside of the scope of Jesus Christ, it seemed like I had a lot of buddies and friends and home, home arrests and homeboys with me. But the moment I said, Lord Jesus, come into my life and he saved me, it looked like problems happened. Is there anybody know that you don't, sometimes you don't feel highly blessed and wonderfully favored? Some, sometimes it seems like you don't even want to get out of the bed and you know you're saved, but something about life can be extraneous on you. But when that happens, Jesus gives us, and Paul is trying to remind the people of who their Savior is. And my brothers and sisters, when I think about this, in this one letter, Peter makes reference to suffering 16 times. Yeah, 16 times, just in chapter 1, this letter, he starts out talking about the suffering. You go to chapter 1, chapter 2, so forth and on, it, it is, it's referencing suffering. And that's where we lose an abundance of people and even some church folk because they think that they should not have to experience suffering. But why shouldn't we experience suffering when he, who knew no sin, took on the sins of the world, and he suffered. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He not only suffered, he bled and he died. I wish I'd get somebody happy up in here because the fact of the matter is suffering is our birthmark. It is suffering that calls us to, to call on his name louder. It is the suffering, the trials, and the tribulation that calls us to trust him when we can't trace, track, or sense him. It is the suffering that calls us to realize that, God, you've been mighty good even now in the midst of my pain. You're still good. Peter is trying to get those Christians back in the day to understand that suffering is our birthmark. Beware when everything is going well in your life. Be, what, be aware when people are always trying to place accolades upon you. Be aware that when things seem to be running well in your life, there's always a devil that will try to come in, infiltrate us, and to bring about destructive measures because his position is he's a stealer, a killer, and he is a deceiver. He is always trying to get us off the plan of God. Can I get a witness? He never has your intent in his heart for you to do great things of God. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Ah, but you don't get stuck right there. You just need to know that every now and again, when you're celebrating your birthday moment, when you're celebrating your deliverance moment, when you're celebrating the fact that you got in a raise, you're celebrating the fact that you're still on top of the ground, there's a devil that wants to come and change your focus. He wants to shatter your hope. And, but God says, don't, don't forget about that. I, I come that you might have life and have life abundantly. That's what that hope thing is all about, y'all. Jesse, Jesse said, keep hope alive. How do we keep hope alive? We keep hope alive knowing that we should only lean on that which is the living hope, and that's Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, the source of our hope in verse 3, the A part, is Christ. Yeah, that's the source of our hope. If you rely on anything, somebody said you sound like you're being redundant. Well, there's some things that need to be redundant on. Is that when you place your hope in stuff, yeah, when you place your hope in things, when you place your hope in the fact that you can remember, it's a fact that you can have the propensity for the fall outside of the scope of all of that. But when you put your hope in him, I remember uh, years ago, I visited one of our members, and, uh, and uh, they were having uh, difficulty with uh, that Alzheimer's, and they could not remember things. They, they, they couldn't even, it, to the point they thought that they were uh, hungry. They knew they were hungry, but they thought that they were, had been filled, and they had to feed them intravenously. They had to go in and put tubes down them to feed them. But I'll never forget that day when I walked in that room to that person and that woman opened her eyes and she said, Ram Wells. And the information that I had gotten all the while that she won't know who you are and she's not eating on her own. She's in the throes of Alzheimer's. But it's amazing if you're going to get stuck in any gear, make sure you get stuck in the gear of Christ. Amen. That's where your hope is. I don't care how many times stuff go bad in your life. Don't get stuck on Christ. Look back over your life and see what he's brought you through. Look around and see how blessed you are. And every now and again, when a pity party moment comes up on you and somebody try to bring it to you, just look where he's brought you from. And if you're going to get stuck in any gear, get stuck in that Jesus gear. Can I get somebody? And what Paul is saying to the Romans, and he's saying to us today, that listen, blessed, he says, be the God and Father, verse 3, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter does some things. He reminds them they are never alone in this journey called life. Oh, I got to, tr I got to try to help y'all win the shout. You are never alone on this journey called life. I know it, I know it. Every now and again, somebody might 
leave you. Yeah. But he'll never leave you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, come a little closer. You may lose your benefits of physical things. You may lose your camaraderie with some folks. Fair weather friends may have come and down they gone. But I got a man named Jesus Christ that has promised us never to leave us. And, and, and that's where we, that's how we, that's how we survive. That's how we keep on coming, even in the midst of dangerous times, because we trust him. And he's always with us. Sometimes you can't feel him. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes you, you seem like you can't even hear him. But if you're a child of God, even in the throes of adversity, sometimes he'll just, he'll just come in those wee moments and those hours where you're almost ready to give up. Have I witnessed in his house this morning? But with this journey, we are never alone. My brothers and sisters, the significance of hope in the B part of chapter verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy. All I'm doing is just reminding you of what you have. As Christians, we have privileged moments. It ain't white privilege. It ain't black privileges. It's Christ's privileges. Yeah, we can call on him when can't nobody else listen. We can work with him when nobody else won't work with us. We can call on him, and one thing he says, we will get an answer. Now, according to his abundant mercies and begotten us again unto a lively hope, that's the scriptures, by the resurrection of Christ, Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, watch this. There, listen, our hope, their hope, wasn't temporal or fickle. Say it again, preacher. That the hope that they had back in that day when it was in Christ was not pretentious. It was not a hope that was on good on some moments and bad on some other times. No, it wasn't that kind of hope that when bills are paid, oh, I'm hopeful. It was that kind of hope that if the bills weren't paid, I'd believe my hope is in Christ. And because it's in Christ, he knows how to get me through my circumstances of life. <laughs> Can I get a witness? So if, if you got hope only when things are well in your life, that's probably like I'm wishing it might not rain or I'm wishing that the stock market may go down. I'm wishing that the, that the interest rate rates will come down. I, but that's, that's, on, that's not the hope that we want if the stock market don't come down. If the interest rates don't get where I want them to be, if the duck don't quack and if the dog don't bark, I, my hope is in Christ because he's already done enough. <laughs> and Paul is trying to get them to look at things that are eternal. Their hope wasn't temporal or fickle. It was lasting. It was enduring. And it is internal. And so not only theirs, but us as well, our hope is lasting, it is enduring, and it is eternal. See, in these last days, when the music has stopped and the noise has silenced, you got to have something better than just a, an emotional experience. Got to have something more than just a monetary object or amount. You got to have something that won't be won't be disintegrated, and that's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of things that I want to prove to you today before I'm done, and that is that our living hope is eternal. Amen. That's a good place to shout and write down. Our living hope, not our, not our worldly hope, but our living hope, what it is that keeps you pushing when you really want to sit down. Our living hope, what is that thing that make me laugh when other folks are crying? Our living hope, what it is that make me shout when I'm the only one in the room shouting? What is it that makes me walk in the right way 
when other folks are going in different pathways. It is that hope that is eternal. What do you mean, Pastor, when you say our living hope is eternal? What I'm trying to get you to understand is that you, it, because it is eternal, there are some things you and I need to do. You want to know what those things are? One thing that you ought to do is realign your thoughts. Hmm. I know not, not to move away from reality, but, but watch how you think about the reality. Realign, because when you think about that this hope that God is talking about that we can have, it is eternal. Eternal means that it is, it is timeless. It is ageless. It, it, it knows how to handle things even on into the, the future. It, it, is, it is eternal. And because it's eternal, we need to realign how we think about things. There's a, there's a woman that's still alive today. She should be about 70 plus years old named Jonna Eckerson uh, Tata. And, and um, she was paralyzed from the, from the neck down in a teenage diving uh, accident. And she, write, she wrote about 40 kind of books, but and one of the books is titled, and I quote, Heaven, Your Real Home. And these are some quotes that she had from that. She said, Eric, Eric, Ericson tells a story that illustrates the power of hope in her life. You know, thank God that there are always somebody that has latched on to this eternal hope, this, this what I call living hope. And Joni Erickson Tata, being paralyzed from the neck down, had to rely on an assistant that she hired to tell us how to tell her how hot a thing was or how cold a thing was because her feelings were gone. She had to, even if there was a, a bump on something that while she was being carried and transported on a wheelchair or either some cooling board, she had couldn't understand that there may have been a, a position of bruising on her body. Uh, and she couldn't understand that even if her leg was broken, that it was broken because she had no feelings. And she said many times, why should I continue to live when everything from the neck down gone? But one thing that she was reminded about because of her Christian growing up, that no matter how bad it is, that your limbs may not work, but as long as your mind is stayed on Jesus. Come on now, y'all. That, that, that's something about that. You know, I, I pray to God that we won't have to experience what Erickson Tata had to experience. I hope that we never have to go through a paralysis moment in our bodies to where we can't feel our fingers, where we can't feel the sensation of hot and cold, where we can't understand hurt and pain from, from a physical sense. I thank God that no matter what happens, one thing it is, I never want to forget about who he he is. Can I get a witness here today? In Colossians, the third chapter, verse two, it is a powerful verse when we think about realigning our thoughts. When we realize that God is not some fictitious animation of a person's imagination, that God ain't just some kind of cosmic Santa Claus. God is God. He's Elohim. He's Jehovah. He is the great I am. And y'all, he owns everything. Not only does he only, y'all ain't got to shout, I shout by myself this morning. He controls everything. And you know what? He knows the ending from the beginning. And he knows the maze that you're in. And though you can feel him or not, he's right there all the time. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 2, when you get in those moments and thinking about my hope has gone away, it's running. It got tennis shoes on. Michael Jordan, it got Nikes on. It's running away from me. Can I tell you, just as it's running from you, you can run and catch it by realigning your thoughts. The third chapter, verse 2 of Colossians says, set your affections. 
Notice that word, set. That don't mean, that don't mean sit. It means you got to do something. Set your affections. What drives you? What keeps giving you the motivation? What it is that when all the dust is settled, what's really important in life to you? What it is that really you can really do without? What is that thing in your life that you can't make it without it? What, what's going on? What's, what's your important rage in your midst? Well, the Bible tells us set your affections on things above. Listen, things above. Can I tell you this morning, your hope can't be on things below, but it got to be on things above. That above is heaven. That ain't something just pie in the sky. Our home is not planet Earth. One day, all of this going to be destroyed, and God's going to make a new heaven and new earth. One day, all of this going to burn up, and the only thing going to be left is what you've done good for the Lord. One day, all of this is struggling and striving, trying to make it through, mask wearing and shot taking and all of that is going to be gone. And, and if you look at that and place your hope on stuff that's going to soon later be gone, then your hope won't be constant and you really can't be eternal. But when you place your affection on things above, I ain't getting no help up in here. Things above, the things of God, whatever he said in these 66 books, whatever his promises are, place your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. And so when we think about it, what, we, we, what do we need to do in the line of having, knowing that our hope that God is talking about is eternal, is to realign, realign your thoughts. Can I be very practical? Who felt like getting up this morning in that cold weather to come over here to a cold building? <laughs> Not many of us. How many of y'all could have done like some of the bedside Baptists and First Baptist did? <laughs> oh, you could have done it. But what brought you out? It wasn't because of the fascination of this preacher. What brought you out? You know what brought you out? I like to think that this is what brought you out. It was Christ. It was Christ that woke you up this morning. And Corona didn't attach itself to you, but it could have. But you thanking God that, God, I can't pay you back for what you've done, but the least I can do is now that you're giving me living authority, I can get up this morning. I go everywhere else. I can get up this morning. I do whatever I want to do. I can get up this morning, and I, I, I don't have everything right in my life, but I, 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 because he woke me up, I can get up, set my affections on things above rather than things on the earth, and know that although the dogs are barking, and guess what? The, the, the little scorpions are biting, but I got a God that if I just stand up and trust him, he'll navigate me through these treacherous waters. Have I witnessed? But now, secondly, you need to refocus your emotion. God have mercy. Realign your thoughts. Because you keep on thinking you ain't going to make it, you're not. The little train said, I think I can. And when you think you can, you get to can and because you think. Uh, when you think you can do a thing, you're trying to accomplish it. It's like the tortoise and uh, the rabbit. And the rabbit at the starting line, shoo, takes off, running like a rabbit. Tell your neighbor, you so cold, you won't even laugh at a good joke. And the tortoise, the turtle, in his mind, he running fast. In his mind, shoo, And the rabbit is gone. And somewhere down the line, the rabbit runs out. On his side, big ears flapping. 
Here come the turtle. That in his mind, swoo! And I believe he remembered this scripture, the race is not given to the swift, but to them that would endure. Can I get a witness? You got to learn not only to realign your thoughts, but you got to learn to refocus your emotion. Everybody shouting, ain't shouting because they happy. Yeah, everything that is glittering ain't gold. When I think about that, Colossians, the third chapter, the second verse said, set your affection on things above. Watch it, not on things of the earth. Because if you listen to CNN all day long, you got a gun in your hand with it cocked. Can I get a witness? If, especially some of them other channels that, that, that channel that foolishness. If you listen to negative folks all day long, you got a knife in your hand and the switchblade has been kicked out and you're ready to cut your vein. Mm -mm. That's why you don't put your hope and so get to talking negative. You got to realign your emotion. When everybody else running away from God, you got to realign your emotion. You got to listen, refocus what your emotions ought to be. Even if you don't feel like shouting, there's some shouting going on the inside. Because when you taste and see that the Lord is good, he gets gooder. That's a bad word. He gets gooder. That's a bad, that's a bad word. He gets gooder. I tell you, that's e bunny. He gets it's good all the time. Can I have anybody have tasted and seen that the Lord is good? Don't he get gooder as time goes by? Even in the midst of storms. And so when we think about our living hope, it is, tell me, it's eternal. You know why? And because it's eternal, realign your thoughts and refocus your emotions. Uh, sometimes I used to tell my preachers, I tell them, try to tell them all the time, don't stop preaching because nobody is hollering. See, when Alabama State University, home of the mighty marching hornets, way over yonder, way over yonder, when we marching in, folks shouting all over the place. And they will very well should. And when the football team back in 1975, 76, 77, 78 uh, was losing, folk didn't go to the place to buy the concession stand because they, they, they really didn't come see the football team anyhow. They come to see the mighty March Hornets and shown up during the classic with them A&M Bulldogs. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't the folks shouting in the stands that motivated us. We had a prof named Prof Lyle that was with us every step of the moment. Prof David D. D. He used to always tell the brass session, we the only session in this band. And that's the thing that kept us motivated. And there were times that we couldn't hear the folks shouting and hollering because that wasn't our motivation anyway. You know, our motivation was we are the mighty margin hornets. And there may, be some, there may be some disturbances on the field there in Hornet Stadium or there on the Dust Bowl or there in Legion Field, but it didn't matter to us. We marched through the adversity because we're the mighty margin hornets. Can I tell somebody, you are a child of the God I serve. You're going to have some good days and some bad days. You're going you're gonna to have some ups and downs. You're going to have some moments where you want to cuss everybody out. But don't forget about realign your thoughts. My hope is built on nothing less. Refocus your emotion. I don't have to shout to know, let folk know I'm saved. I just keep walking through the muck and the mire. I keep going through the ambushes that are put in my way. I keep going, know that he's my rock in a weary land. I keep on pushing because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And that's our living hope because it is eternal. Tell yourself it's eternal. But, but, then, but then secondly, our living hope is sure, S-U-R-E, sure. 
preach up in here because here it is in these last days that we live, people not perishing for the lack of inspiration. A oh, man, folks in, inspired by a whole lot of stuff. In the rap industry, they inspired by the rap artists. In the blues, jazz, whatever the industry, they, they, and in the sports athletic industry, people are motivated. Alabama got their head tore off last week, but you still alive. Amen. Inspired, but, but people don't, people are not perishing for, from the lack of inspiration. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. And I'm not talking about human knowledge. I'm talking about Christ's knowledge. On Christ, he's the solid rock. And so when I think about it, sure, there are some things in this life that are kind of like happenstance. Some things that are predicated upon something happening. But, but with this thing called living hope, it's sure. I'll prove it to you. First Peter, the first chapter, verse four. You got your Bibles open? And, and he says to, to an inheritance, verse four, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. It reserved in heaven for you. That sounds like a sure thing to me. Oh, yeah. I don't need no faith to put my shoes on when my shoes are already on. That's a sure thing, my shoes on. But, but there's some things I don't know what's going to happen the next few moments. But one thing I'm sure about, that God won't leave me in these next few moments. Cancel may come. Yeah. Orient may come. Now they got another Omicron might come. But what ain't going to leave is my faith in God. Listen, sickness may try to infiltrate, but it can't take away my joy. Husband and wives may split up and go opposite directions. God forbid. But my joy ain't in folks. Church may have to be empty out again the way things are going. But I don't need to have a church building to have church. You ever had church in your backyard? You ever had church when everybody else was going to church and left the church, didn't have church at all? You ever been in a situation where you weren't sure about a lot of things, but one thing you were sure, a man named Jesus came and sought you out, bought you out, pick you up, not 360 you, but turn you in a better direction? Aren't you sure that your salvation is not a phony? It's not predicated upon you? Your salvation is predicated upon Jesus Christ who hung, bled, died, rose the third day morning, Aren't you glad this morning that your peace is not hooked up to a car? Aren't you glad this? Aren't you sure about this? That can't nobody take away your salvation? You've been through the fire. Come on, shout. You've been through the storm. Come on, can I get a witness? Come on, seven of y'all can get up and say, I've been through all of that, Pastor. I'll make the eighth person. But I've been through it all, been through the rain, been through the storm. I don't see seven folks yet. I've been through all of that. But one thing I've discovered, he never left me. He kept me when I couldn't see my way through. And some folks have died, but they ain't going to hell. They're in the arms of Jesus Christ. Because when you're with Christ, there are no failings. Amen. It's sure. Sit if you can. It's sure. This hope that we are talking about. We're moving towards this hope. Not only because it's eternal, but it's sure. And when I think about this, David Jeremiah talks about, and I, and I love him. He's a great, great preacher. Uh, he talks about the obsession he had when he was at Dallas Theological Seminary there in Dallas, Texas. And I quote, he said, Every sport page I knew about them, them Dallas cow. I know, I know. Just stay with me 
till I get through this, okay. He says, I knew everything that the sports writer said about the Dallas Cowboys. I knew everything about it. He says, I went to those Tuesday days luncheons where they would have and allow people to come in in that, in that city to come so that they can promote uh, their team. He said, I knew about every player. I knew that player that was slow. I knew about that player that was swift. He said, I knew about that player that could catch on a dime. He said, I knew all the things. I knew about the coach's temperament. I knew all of that. That's what David Jeremiah said. He says, but once when a home game was blacked out because it failed to sell out. And he says his wife there in seminary, his, he and his wife was almost knocked out because they couldn't see it there in their particular area because it was not a sellout, so they blacked it out. He says, but what they did, they got in their car and they drove to Oklahoma because in Oklahoma they could get a chance to see the Dallas Cowboys perform on the football field. He says, but when the game was over with, they won on that particular time. He said he didn't feel no happier then than he felt when they lost other times. And I end that quote. Because you know what? Last week, you seen Alabama take on and knock out some folks. I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. I've been there all my days. I'm going to be there until I go to glory. We struggling like, like, like pip and tip. We struggling. We ain't got no coach now. But I discovered something about when, when Miami won, amen. When they lost, oh no, but amen. Yeah, when, 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 they, when they traded somebody, and when they got tour, amen. And when tour went down, oh no, but amen. Amen. You'll get it in a minute. You'll get it in a minute. And when Alabama lost last week, all them t-shirts, my wife said, what are we going to do with all these t-shirts? Sell them. Amen. Can I tell y'all, life can be hurtful, but when you think about your living hope is sure. Weeping may endure for a night. Get happy with me. Joy always come in the morning. Your in, in the morning may not be a.m. Your in the morning might be p.m. Your in the morning might not be sunshine. It may be a hailstorm. All you need to know is joy does come in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. But God is always going to restore the joy of your salvation. Can I get somebody? So no matter whether your team on earth is winning, you get on the right team. Know that you're on the team of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says you ain't got to worry about it. You already have won. I ain't got but three claps right there. You've already won through all of that. You have already come. You just got to go through and know that your hope is not only eternal, but it's sure. When I think about that, we got an inheritance. And can I take a few moments and explain to you because it will bless your heart. Our inheritance will be incorruptible. And when you look at that word incorruptible, First Peter says that to an inheritance incorruptible. This is setting your fiction on things above the word of God, not things on the earth. When I think about that, this means it cannot perish. It cannot be drowned. It does not age. It's vibrant as our young people have been here this morning. It, it, it will not deteriorate, Lord have mercy, and it will not die. It does not have the seed of corruption within it. It's incorruptible, even though you and I are flawful. But one day God is going to present us flawless. While we're walking in this life, he's making us better. I don't have time to treat this, but I guarantee you, if I talk to your individual, many of us would say, I'm better today than I was two years ago. I may not be where I need to be, but I'm getting better as God keeps working with me. Have you been through something in your life? 
that had not you gone through it, you wouldn't see God in the way that you see him now. Can I get a witness? Have there been death moments in your life through your, through your family members, your significant others, but it caused you to see God in a different light? Can you know that this journey sometimes will have bumps in it, but every time there's a bump, there's somebody that can smooth out the bumps. You just keep on hanging out with Jesus. And the Bible tells us that not only that, he says that our inheritance will be undefiled. Say undefiled. What do you mean by that? Well, the, the verse 4 says that it will not only be incorruptible, but it will be undefiled. That means that it cannot be polluted. It can't be fooled with all of this foolishness that the Trumpsters are talking about, trying to get us to be confused about voting. They can put all kinds of folks to try to prevent us from voting, but they don't know. Listen, they try to take, they try to take prayer out of school, didn't they? Listen, they try to stop us from praying, but you know what? We can just pray on the inside. They don't want you to open your mouth. You ain't got to open your mouth. How many of y'all know when you free and free indeed, you don't need somebody to legislate a moment where you can shout you're free. When you're free in Christ, Christ can open up doors and show up, he can close doors. He can put look roadblocks and he he can show up, put a bridge over troubled water. There's nothing that can diffuse you and cause you to default on what he's done when you're with Christ. You may have some bad days, but in the midst of it, he'll be right there. Come here, Hebrew boys, men at that time in a fiery furnace, hotter than it's ever been. The Bible said Jesus was right there with them. Come here in the lion's den, Daniel. Daniel down there, the lion hungry than they ever been hungry before. And Daniel used them for a pillar at night. Y'all got a witness up in here. You ever been in any situation in your life when it seems like the odds were against you, but somehow God brought you through? You ever been in a situation where you try to dot your T, I's and cross your T, but messed up, but somehow God brought you through? You ever heard a doctor say, mm, 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 I've done all I can do for you. Well, thanks be to God that it didn't end with you, doctor, because there's another doctor that when you can't do what you do, he's already done what needs to have been done for me. <laughs> when I think about that, Colossians, the third chapter, can tell, tells us that it's not defiled, but also that it'll never fail. That's what it is, our inheritance it, listen, it can, it's incorruptible, it is undefiled, and it'll never fade. Uh, when my boys were young, young boys, and they're teenagers, and they, their mother went and bought some jeans, because all I know, Gary, was about Levi's. Yeah, Levi's, with Levi's on the back pocket. And there was that, that dark blue with that crease, down the middle, and with cuffs in the bottom. And uh, man, Andrew and Trey came and showed me they new pants. And them new pants, Barbara, were not only torn, raggedy the edges were frazzled, but they were faded. I said, them ain't no new pants. Them pants faded. This the going thing, Dad. And I've seen some faded, cut up britches with the pocket hanging out, costing eighty plus dollars. And I remember the Levi's struts. Dark blue, crease down the middle, cuffs, and they just wore, 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 wore. Mama washed them with a rub bowl, still blue. Got a wash machine, put them through there. Still blue. Don't put no Clorox in your Levi's struts so they can still be blue. 
That's one thing about our religion. It ain't like other folk religion. We don't put no Clorox on it. It's real religion. It is undefiled religion. It is, it is inherited religion. It is irrevocable religion. And it's a religion that won't fade. Listen, everything else might fade, but not this, this gospel of Jesus Christ. It won't fade. Can I get a witness here? I'm almost where I need to be. When I think about this undefiled, this incorruptible, and this never fading position of our inheritance. Uh, Colossians 3, 3 through 4 says it, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Here the verse is, verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, Lord have mercy, then shall ye also appear, the Bible says, with him in glory. Oh, my God, we have some great expectation, y'all, that we're moving towards hope that in this life, fingernails going to get brittle. In this life, eyesight going to get dim. In this life, steps are going to get shorter. In this life, bones are going to hurt. Muscles are going to hurt. In this life, disappointment will come. In this life, you're going to get up to get up to do something and got to think about what you got up to do. Anybody been there? In this life, you're going to turn on the lights and not ever know what you turned them on for. In this life, teeth going to drop out. Yeah. In this life, hearing going to go. Anybody say, I can't, can't hear that good over here. I'm, I'm almost over here. But in this life, Things are going to fade. But in this life, when your hope is in Christ, when you are sure about his hope, though your physical extremities fall away, one glad morning, this body, going back to the dust of the earth, with all its problems, we're going to have another body not made with the hands of man. That glorified body that won't have no more sickness. That glorified body that won't get weary, tired, and busted. That glorified body that, listen, don't have to worry about going to a doctor. That glorified body that God's going to put the new soul that already been saved. And one glad morning, we won't be crying in heaven. We'll be shouting all over God's heaven, putting on our new white robe, putting on our shoes, and walking all over God's heaven. How many of y'all longing for that day when your hope is sure that day one day will come? And then finally, my brothers and sisters, we've seen our living hope is eternal. And our living hope is sure. Here's the last point. Our living hope is daily. Daily. Let me give you a chance to catch up. Daily. Our living hope is daily. Uh, catch up a look. Come, come look close. The hope that we have is not only eternal. Yeah. Not only is it, the scripture says, sure, but it's daily. Yesterday, has been chronicle is the past. Tomorrow hasn't been chronicle yet by us is in the future. But new mercies we experience daily. Somebody said it. New mercies what you did and what was done to you yesterday is in your past. That's why you don't look back and fall out today because your past may not have been that great. Aren't you glad that God is a God of another chance? Man, all you have is today. And today outweighs yesterday. 
And don't worry about tomorrow. Just live today. Because tomorrow will take care of itself. Great is thy mercy today. New mercies every day. Daily we get up because he's so wonderful. Daily we experience his peace, his grace, his mercy. Daily he gives us what we need for that day. We pray that prayer. Our daily bread. You don't need the whole refrigerator filled up. Just need to know that God is a God that is daily. You call that woman down in Zarephath and she'll tell you, I serve a daily God. Ain't got much in my barrel. Don't have much a cruise of oil. But what I got is a daily Jesus. And the Bible says every day she went to that barrel and pulled out some meal. She poured that oil a cruise, cruise of oil, and some came out. Lord have mercy, when I look at it from the biblical inferences, that barrel was not rolling over. When she looked in, it didn't hardly have nothing in it. But she reached in because she had hope that the same God that did what he did for her yesterday, oh, he can do it today. She reached in yesterday and pulled out enough to have what she needed. So she reached in today and pulled out enough, even in a land of famine. Can I tell somebody, can't nobody do you like Jesus? Didn't he bring you through yesterday? You ain't talking to me. Didn't he make a way for you yesterday? And you already experienced today, hadn't he made a way for you today? You're sitting in those pews not because he's trying to figure it out. What he did for you yesterday, he's done it again today. And if by chance, if the creek don't rise, God can do it again. That joy you used to have, God can bring it back again. You ain't talking. Listen, that assurance you had can be reassured today. Can I get somebody? When I think about the living hope, that it is daily. And I'm closing. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 5, it is who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. And the scripture says, ready to be revealed in the last time. And there are two things that I would say today is that the assurance of God's power is daily. The blessed assurance Jesus is mine, oh, what a foretaste, a glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. First Peter 1 and 6 says, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Notice the text, though now for a season, yeah, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. What he's saying is that you're in the throes and grips of adversity. But don't you stop shouting even in the midst of pain. Because God has promised us that he will be with us even when we can't sense, trace, or track him. You don't have to wait till your ship come in to give some God that you serve the praise. You ought to have a God to know that it's already been done. And so you praise him as though it is with you, calling things that are not as though they are. And my brothers and sisters, thank God for the assurance of God's power daily. But not only that, the assurance of faith daily. It took faith to get out of the bed. It took faith to bring you to this place. It's going to take faith to move you to these parts of the life that God has given you even at the end of this day. When I think about verse 7, verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish. Notice the text says, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I'm done, but I 
can't sit down because I feel my help coming on in this place. There's somebody that can't give God praise because things seem to be bad in your life. But my hope that I have is not built on the stuff that's happening in this world. I'm so glad that a man named Jesus. The Bible said that in the pits of time when everything had hit rock bottom on the earth, Jesus stood and said, make me a body and I'll go down and save my folks myself. Aren't you glad this morning that a man named Jesus walked down the portals of heaven and was dispatched in a Bethlehem manger? Aren't you glad that the Bible said that he found himself in a old dusty rabbi place and he found himself talking about his own word. Aren't you glad that a man named Jesus took a cross on his shoulder and marched up called Gothos here? Aren't you glad this morning that a man named Jesus, the savior of the world, the bright and morning star, the lifter of my head, my bridge over troubled water, my joy in times of sorrow, my peace in the midst of the my peace in the midst of a storm, my battle acts in times of war. I'm so glad that a man named Jesus, the Bible said that they lifted him high and stretched him out wide and dropped him low. I'm glad that he didn't stay in the grave. The Bible says uh, right early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. What's his name? ain't talking to me what's his name have you tried him have you tried him ain't he all right come on tell somebody he's all right I know he's all right hey hey when your hope has gotten up and gone it's because they wasn't living hope when you have living hope, you can stand in the midst of your tears and say, I know he's all right. Is there anybody this morning that got some troubles in your life? Raise your hand. But when you got living hope, just throw your head back and say, I know he's all right. and snare that God has already made a way. Just keep on moving towards hope because it is eternal. It is sure. And Lord have mercy, it's daily. Daily, sure, and eternal. That's why we shout. We don't shout because Folk dying with this coronavirus. We shouting because when those who die in Jesus, they really are alive. And when he appears, oh, that great getting up morning, we shall, the dead in Christ, shall rise first. We that remain shall be caught up. That could be us. But one thing is certain, that's going to be a great coronation moment. And the saints of the Old Testament and those that have transitioned even now cannot crown him until we get there. You can't get there by having superficial faith. You can't get there only one way. That's having living faith. And that living faith is in Christ Jesus. Joni Erickson Tata. Paralyzed from the neck down. Couldn't feel the sensation of feeling. Couldn't feel her hurts. Couldn't feel the pain. But one thing that she could do, Colossians 3, 2, set affections on things above, no 
on that one day that paralyzed body would no longer be paralyzed. We're today, we're standing in a great time to tell somebody that been paralyzed because having no hope, been disappointed because of the superficiality of this worldly hope. We can share with them the living hope, Jesus Christ. Go to Muhammad's grave and there'll be dust particles. Go to Koresh's grave, there'll be dust. Go to Confucius' grave, there'll be dust. But if you go by Jesus' tomb, nothing but swaddling clothes, folded up nice and neatly. Why stand ye gazing? The same Christ that was here and gone shall come again. I hope this morning, though you've been dashed in many of your dreams, not about a dream, it's about Christ. On oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground sinking sand. The living hope that is eternal, the living hope that is sure, the living hope that is daily is for you. I want to invite you today that you don't know him, to know him. That's a pretty song that's going on in the background. And as it's been sung or however, you have that opportunity not only here in worship, but then those that are on the airway. He's waiting for you. Church doors are wide open. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I need you. He's waiting for you. restore the joy of your salvation he will give you blessed assurance he will bring it to you daily and he'll never cease to afford you that moment to trust him while the song is going just like you are whatever the case is just surrender to him afresh today he's waiting for you
me right quickly, not no show thing, even on that camera. Just think about how when you place your hope in him, that you've been through some stuff, you're going through some things right now, but he's keeping you. He has submitted you to his side. There have been moments in all of our lives where we were getting ready to walk away from him. I can't take no more. One problem after a problem, series of runners coming, giving me devastating news. But every time, he delivers me from all of my issues. And he does that daily. Can I get a witness? He does it daily does it day to clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Don't let nobody cry for you. Crowd yourself. He's so good to us. And y'all, even in the midst of what we're in now, he's still good to us. And we put our faith, we put our hope, we put our trust in him. And he's not, he's not a killjoy. And he's not one that can tell a lie. He'll remain with us day after day. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Put your hands together and thank the Lord for his word today. Yeah. A living hope. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah. Sister Catrice Pro is going to come give us some directives. And uh, while she come, uh, let's uh, thank God for just today. Yeah. Whatever you need, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't try to figure it out. He'll give you what you need for today. Amen listen to Catrice as she come and I'll be right back. Thank you, Pastor Wells. We are now in this space of time doing worship service where we ask you to join the body of Christ by praying the sinner's prayer or to rededicate your life back to Christ. Our prayer is for you to connect to a Bible-based Christ-centered church. And if that connection is here, with the Grove, at the Grove, we welcome you to our church family. Simply contact us at 205-786-3351 so that we can walk this Christian journey together. Thank you for your continued support of this ministry by worshiping Christ through the giving of your tithes and offering. We ask now that you cash out, use online PayPal, or if you are in person, we have baths that's located strateg strategically throughout the worship center, and we ask that you give now. To date, we are 1.15 million total cases of the coronavirus, and in 2022 alone, 226,773 cases. Hospitals are full, and restrictions are relaxed. You have to personally advocate for your health and wellness by wearing your mask, washing your hands often and thoroughly with warm water and soap, social distancing, and getting tested when exposed and or experiencing symptoms. Protecting yourself is also protecting others. Take care of your spiritual, mental, and physical health and know that we are that we have a living hope in Christ. Bees up, everyone, because we have the victory. Have a safe and blessed week. God bless you. Amen, amen. Will you stand? Those of you who have already given electronically, thank you, praise the Lord, for your tithes and your offering. Uh, those of you who um, need to give, this is that great moment that we have once we get the benediction. You'll be led by your usher, and uh, there are a couple of uh, drop-off points where you can do that. Continue to do to serve the Lord as you serve the Lord. You can't do it without serving people. And when it comes to uh, the finance of this church, every member has a responsibility to be with their tithes and offering. You don't pay your tithes and offering. You bring your tithes and offering. And uh, some people get caught up on the percentage. 
Uh, let me tell you that you need to at least start somewhere, and that somewhere is 10%. And then as you fall in love with him, you'll find yourself uh, trusting him more. And as you fall in love with him, you'll find yourself giving to him more. Not only will he press down and shake it together, but he'll allow it to roll over. We just need to trust him. Whatever you do this week, do it with a responsible, with a responsible character. Uh, don't go get in places. Listen, don't go without mask. If you haven't been uh, with your vaccine, get vaccinated. Uh, your flu season is among us, and the corona is wreaking havoc. So please be mindful. What I do not want to do is go back to where we were uh, last year, a couple of years ago, and that is just uh, having five or six people here to do what we need to do and do virtual. We want to continue to do that, but we have to do it safely. Finally, uh, we have put some parameters in place, and those parameters are that we just cannot fraternize with one another. When we come into this building, we can't be walking all over the building. People that are not operating in ministry at that particular time, that are at their post, they are there at their post. If you're not operating in ministry on that particular day, you need to be in the worship service and you need to be seated. The only time that you need to get up if you're going to the conference station and we need to be very careful about that. We just cannot take things for granted and take it lightly. Do I, do I have any witnesses? Uh, I, I want to continue to let us have come in and have in-person worship. We just can't be roaming all over the place. Please keep that in mind. Now, I'm crazy. I've asked very nicely for the last two months. Uh, then I'm going to be coming to a little forcefully because when you know about all these folks that have been infiltrated by this coronavirus, uh, it ain't no joke. So we don't want to do things as normal because we are not as normal. So we got to be, you know, my responsibility is not only for your souls, but it's for your well-being. And uh, I don't want to get sick myself. So we want to all be right so we can kind of stay here and keep things going. Amen. So we shouldn't have to be talking to grown folks the way uh, we haven't to. But if you continue to go against the protocol, then you leave us up to no other choice but to come a little bit forcible with love and let you know that you're out of order. Amen. How many of y'all received that? I said, how many of y'all received that? Okay, well, if you don't want to receive it, go on and receive it because it's going to be that way. Amen. So we're going to take a moment as we receive the, uh, the benediction. But before that, we're going to thank God for these, uh, these gifts, the tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you and we bless your name today. Lord, thank you now for the opportunity to come to worship and to praise. And as we come today, Lord, we ask that you would take these, our tithes and our offerings, and God, that you would use them in a very, very powerful way. For we love you and we honor you now. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and now forevermore. Let us say together, amen, amen, and amen again. Amen. Please be seated one more time. Those that are in section two, you just sit it down, you just sat it down. Now you can stand up and be governed section two.